Hello there, Tony Medley once again and a nice warm welcome back to my workshop. Uh, today's project I'm going to do one of my favourites because um, I do sell a lot of these. Uh, people seem to, it's not just my favourite, it's making uh, Sapelli which is uh, African mahogany. Uh, I'm going to make uh, a nice bowl and round the centre uh, I'm going to make a couple of bowls to be perfectly honest. Uh, but I'll just do them one video at a time uh, with a different um, decorative ring around the centre. So I'm going to do it um, all in hopefully Sapelli and a little bit of um, my favourite is maple. Uh, it's a nice contrast and people seem to, to want to go for it. So uh, all, I'm, all I've got at the moment is uh, a nine inch square piece of Sapelli, and then I'm going to go through the segment, the segmenting of it all, and then obviously put it all together. Well, first, what we've got to do is find the centre uh, and put a, a, a glue point on, so we can make a chucking point on the other side. Cut the corners off, um, and then obviously get it in the lathe and get it to round. Well, it's time to do the segments. Um, what I'm using is a 30 degree um, triangle. Put it into my sled, set them down, make sure that they're nice and tight so there's no movement on the, uh, the two bars. And um, the way that I do it uh, quite easily is the circumference of the base of the bowl is 770 millimeters. Divide that by 12, gives you each segment has to be 64 millimeters. So we're gonna set this at 64 millimeters and then cut the segments. One of the other important things to point out is on one side, you have to put a straight line. That's the one towards you. And then the top one, uh, as a wavy line and it'll become apparent later on in the video so that they all go the same way once you uh, start to um, put the ring into place. Now, I've said this before um, I have them marked one and two so you cut the first uh, piece off just to get the angle on number two and then you go back to number one cut the second cut then the third cut is back onto number two and the fourth cut is back onto number one and you go do that right the way throughout until you've got 12 segments.
Well, it's time to cut the feature ring now. Um, and all I've done, I've reduced the length by four millimeters. And all I'm gonna do is put a shim, which is parallel, because you've already got the angle on this particular one. So you're just gonna put a shim the same size, four millimeters long, to make it uh, up to the 64 millimeters. Right, my least favorite job now is just to take these uh, fuzzies off, or oh, that's what I call them anyway, it's just that little bit. But whatever you do, don't take it off there because you, you might alter the angle of it. So you just go through it, make sure that you've got all of the ends off. So when you glue them together, they will make uh, perfect contact. So we'll do that right the way through. Right, I like to do a, a dry run and what I've done I've put them together and I don't know whether you can see that that's the one with the line so what you're going to end up with one with a line one without a line one with a line and right the way around but the one with the wavy line all goes the same way and it's just to compensate for your blade so all I'm going to do is just do a nice dry run just make sure that they're all um, together and there's no gaps in it it's the perfect uh, choice before I glue it up well it's now time to glue them up and I must admit it's my least favorite job uh, I just find it a bit of a laborious work what I always do is put a little bit of cling film uh, over the disc just to save any anything happening uh, and uh, an easy way, or what I find easy, the easiest way, is to uh, put the glue, and I just use Gorilla Glue. I used to use the uh, delayed set, and it was so expensive. And to be perfectly honest, this does just as, well, it does a better job to be perfectly honest. Um, so all I do is put a little bit on each side, Make sure that it's covered and then make sure you've got it on all over the all over like that and then start to build the ring. All I do then is just give them a little massage in and uh, I've never, I shouldn't say this because it, it's tempting fate, that I've never had a failure as yet. So um, it must be a reasonably good way of doing it.
it's now time to do the feature ring but when you uh, take the, um, the little fuzzies off make sure uh, and when you take that, that off make sure you put equal pressure so you don't alter the, um, the size of it then just go around it all because at the end of the day uh, we want this to say, stay the same uh, distance which I cut it four millimeters so uh, just take them all off and then you're not altering the size of that or the, the, the width of it On the feature ring, I've done exactly the same. Uh, one with the line, one without the line, one with the line, one without the line. All the crosses are, are the wiggly line is on the top. Uh, these are the little fillets what go inside it, and they're all the same size because the angle is on the maple itself, not on the sapelli. So all it needs now is glue them together. Well, it's time to glue. Um, the feature ring in place and all I do to make it easier for myself is to put a little line right the way through and then you get them exactly uh, in between so we'll get on and start glowing them up Well, I've glued it up, but I think I've made a slight mistake. It's about three, four, possibly five millimetres this way. So it's obviously not centralised. Uh, it's just going to make it harder for me to turn. And I will have to take five millimetres off more than I would normally like to. Uh, it's going to make it uneven when we start to turn it. So all I can do really is uh, try it and see but I'm not sure whether it could be a failure or not so uh, if you do try this at home please try to get it centralized um, yeah you can see it's a it's possibly eight millimeters out out of center so just try to get it as central central as possible uh, and then we can take it from there Yes, you can see my mistake when I turn the lathe on. Uh, it's just going to make it that much harder to, to do. Uh, so, please, if you try to do them, try to get it as central as possible. I'll turn the lathe on slowly, and you can see it's way out. Um, Schoolboy error. I should have. I should have known better.
Well, that's the one that I've done um, previously, or the next one that I'm doing. The reason that I do these is they, they are a good seller. Uh, you can see that that's the way that it should be. Uh, I've got it nice and uh, centralised, and obviously um, it, it is a little bit bumpy. It's because of the the way that it's that it's made. Uh, but this one's made of um, oak. I either do sapelian oak or sapelli and uh, maple. Uh, I think it's just a good contrast. I also uh, put a little bit of sapelli fleck in it in the feature ring. It just seems to set it off. So I was very, very surprised that I managed to save that one. And as you can see, uh, the top rim, I just to say done it. So uh, all in all, uh, yes, uh, another Another perfect one more. Imperfect or nearly imperfect anyway. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, I enjoyed making it, I always do. I've, I've got this thing about uh, segmenting, absolutely love it. Uh, I find it very therapeutic. Um, anyway, if you haven't already, please subscribe, give me the thumbs up and if you've got any requests or anything that you want me to make, um, I'll uh, just drop them in the comments below and I will definitely answer them. Anyway, catch up with you on the next video. Thanks for watching now. Bye.